Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, meet Mr. Death. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Nineteen fifteen was a big year for a lot of people in New York City. Herman Arnold, for instance. Herman Arnold, the gambler, was murdered. And because of that, it was a big year for Jerry Mason, drugstore clerk. Yes, 1915 was the year Jerry Mason met Mr. Death. You see, just before he died, Herman Arnold persuaded Jerry Mason to embezzle $1,800 from the safe at Thatcher's drugstore where he worked. He was going to double it overnight. That's what Jerry told Laurie Crane, his girlfriend. Only then the news came. Arnold was murdered. The money was gone. And all Laurie could say was... Jerry... Maybe we'd better run. Leave town. Are you crazy? They'd catch us sooner or later. I'll think of something now. Let me alone. Yes, if it hadn't been for Herman Arnold and his foolproof scheme for doubling that embezzled money, Jerry Mason might never have met Mr. Death. But the meeting was in the cards that night in April, 1915. Everything that happened was in preparation for the meeting. Herman Arnold's death, Mr. Thatcher's coming back from his vacation, and after Laurie's phone call... Oh, sorry, I kept you waiting. The phone... Yeah. Got some aspirin? Yeah, sure. There you are. 25. Open kind of late tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I was about to close up when you came in. That's 25 out of... Hey. What's the matter? Well, you... You gave me a $1,000 bill. Yeah, I know. There's something else I want to buy besides aspirin. Well, I can't make change for this. You can keep the change. Huh? And there are four more just like that one for you. When you deliver I don't get it, mister. We alone? Well, wait a minute. Yeah, we're alone. You're pretty hard up for dough, ain't you? Small matter of 1,800 bucks. Who told you? Never mind, I know. There's something we want to buy, Mr. Mason. You're the only guy in town who sells it. Yeah? This ain't ordinary merchandise, Mr. Mason. I understand you have a regular customer by the name of Ted Townley. Yeah, the newspaper columnist. What's he buy here? Has his prescriptions filled. What kind of prescription? Chloral hydrate. He can't sleep at night without it. Pretty powerful drug, ain't it? Not in small doses. I put it up for him in capsule. I see. What about large doses? What do you mean? I mean, if he was accidentally to take a capsule, well, it was loaded with maybe three times as much as usual. Oh, well, that wouldn't happen. I'm very careful. Eight grains is all Suppose you accidentally loaded one of them capsules, Mr. Mason. Oh. Get it? I see. You want to buy a, a murder? It's only murder when you get caught. Now, if Mr. Townley was to be found the next morning dead with an overdose of chloral hydrate in him, what would you say? That is, if you was holding the post-mortem. Well, I'd check the rest of the capsules in the box. Uh-huh. And suppose you found them all kosher. Then I'd say he took more than one on purpose. Is it worth five grand? I don't know. Five I... grand just to load one capsule and slip it in his next prescription? All right, I'll do it. You're smart, Mr. Mason. I'll have the other four grand for you within an hour after Mr. Townley wakes up dead. Good night, Mr. Mason. Five thousand dollars. I'm okay. I better close up now. Uh, pardon me. Look, how'd you get in here? Well, I came in through the side door. I been looking at the magazines over there behind the rack. I'd, I'd like to purchase this. How long have you been here? Oh, half an hour or more. I hope you don't mind. That 
man who just left? Yes, I saw him. I didn't want to interrupt. You both seem to be so interested. You heard what we were saying? Oh, I didn't pay much attention. You see, I'm quite excited. I I'm going on a trip to Europe. I'll take this issue of travel, if you don't mind. It, it has a remarkable article on Syria. Ha have you ever been to Europe, Mr. Mason? How do you know my name? Oh, I happen to hear that gentleman call you Mr. Mason. Is that all you heard? Well, what's the matter, Mr. Mason? I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry if I eavesdropped, but it was entirely unintentional. I see. Uh, magazine's 25 cents. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, there you are. Thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited about my trip, I can hardly close my eyes at night. It's a good thing I don't do this very often. They say a large proportion of American businessmen die prematurely because they can't sleep at night. What made you say that? Why, it's true. You know, Mr. Mason, this will be the first time in my life I've left New York State, except for a trip or two to Jersey City, of course. <laughs> no wonder I'm excited, eh? When are you leaving? May 1st. Oh, say, I, uh, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. What? Uh, well, the next issue of Travel has an article on English inns. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to put one aside for me. Okay, I'll save you. Oh, I'll come in for it. It should be a week or so, shouldn't it? Or just before the 1st of May. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll be going. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry about being so touchy. You know, that, that other customer, he kind of had me on edge, kept talking in riddles. You hear what he was telling me? What? Just a word now and then, enough to... To what? To know it was none of my business. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Mason. I'll be back on April 30th for the magazine. Friends, as you sit listening to the whistler, you hear only sounds. You hear a certain creaking... And in your mind, you picture a slowly opening door. Or the sound of a motor accelerating, and you visualize a car driving off. All right, here's a test for you. See if you can picture in your mind the trademark of the sponsor of this program, your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer. I'll give you two seconds. Well, you were right. If you visualized a black circle with yellow letters spelling out the words signal gasoline... And, of course, a traffic signal in the center. Which is why we say, let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. What's more, that's a mighty good sign to look for these days. Because there you'll find not only Signal's famous go-farther gasoline, but the full line of Signal specialized lubricants. Really conscientious service, too, by experienced signal dealers. More eager to please you because they're in business for themselves. So let the black and yellow signal circle be your insurance of the protection your car needs to last out the duration. And now, back to the whistler. So Jerry Mason didn't close the store that night after the little man had left with his travel magazine. He just stood there at the counter thinking for a long time. Then he went back to the pharmacy department and took down a jar of chloral hydrate and a few gelatin capsules. Yes, it could be done easily, simple as ABC. The easiest five grand he'd ever make in his life. Or perhaps the hardest. That little man with a travel book, how much had he heard? You watched him carefully, Jerry. It wasn't a sign he knew anything. Go home and get some sleep. Forget about Laurie waiting for you at her apartment. Forget about the little man. Just go home and get some sleep. Two o'clock. Forget about the little man, Jerry. Just an innocent old fuddy-duddy who happened to stroll in that side door at the wrong time. Go on, get some sleep. He knows. He must know. He knew your name, didn't he? If he could hear that, he could hear the rest. That is, if he was listening. Wait a minute. Get hold of yourself. 
Are you going to toss over five grand because of a crazy hunch and go to prison for embezzlement when Thatcher starts looking for that 1800? Are you yellow? Don't be stupid. Get some sleep. Yes, get some sleep. <laughs> Look like a ghost. I couldn't sleep all night. I gotta decide right now. Tell will be in here for his prescription any minute. We made a wrong guess, Jerry, about the 1800s. I know, I know. I love you, Jerry. Don't let them drag you down any farther. But what about Thatcher's money? Jerry, it's murder. If I get caught, it's murder. I just can't get that guy with the magazine out of my mind. Townley's a big man, Jerry. They won't pass it off without a question. He knows too much about too many people. Well, there can only be one answer, I tell you. The guy's an addict, and everybody knows that people like that die from overdoses every day. I'm a cinch. If that little guy with the glasses is as dumb as he looks. Oh. Morning, Jerry. Oh, Mr. Townley. How's the newspaper business? Rotten, thanks. Uh, hmm. Oh, but this is my fiancée, Miss Crane. Miss Crane? How do you do? A word of advice, Miss Crane. Keep him away from the newspaper business. Fate worse than death. Uh... How about my chemicals, Jerry? Yes, sir. If you can wait, I'll have it for you in just a minute. Okay. I really mean it, Miss Crane. You do? Yeah. Maybe she's right, Jerry. Maybe you'd better forget the whole mess. And yes, throw away $5,000. More money than you'll ever have if you live to be 100. Townley's a nice guy. Be ashamed to bump him off. Maybe Thatcher will listen to reason about the discrepancy. Let you off easy. Yes. Take that capsule out and look at it for a minute. Five thousand bucks. Right in the palm of my hand. Five thousand. All right, Mr. Townley. There's one for good measure. <laughs> It's done, Jerry. No way of changing it now. And even you're surprised when it pays off only two nights later. Two more nights without sleep, by the way. It's about midnight when you hear someone at the door. Oh, now, who could that be at this time of night? Yes? You Jeremiah T. Mason? That's right. Sorry to get you out of bed this time of night, Mr. Mason. I'm Hodges, Homicide Bureau. Homicide? Don't be alarmed. Just making a routine investigation. It hasn't come out in the papers yet, but Ted Townley, the columnist, was found dead in his apartment this afternoon. Overdose of sleeping powder. I see. Well, come in, please. Thanks. Sit down? Yeah. Well, only be a minute. I understand you're employed by the Thatcher Drug Company where Townley got his prescriptions filled. Yes. As a matter of fact, I usually put them up myself. What was the drug? Chloral hydrate. Mm-hmm. How long had he been taking it? Oh, I think about five years. I see. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute. Sure, sure, go ahead. Hello? Mr. Mason? Yeah. You did a nice job. Oh, oh don't apologize, Laurie. You didn't get me out of bed. Inspector Hodges of the Homicide Squad is here. I get you. It seems... Townley, the columnist, was found dead in his apartment. I'll address that door to general delivery. Name of Charles Henshaw. Got it? Yes, that's it. He got the drug from us. That's why the inspector's here. Take it easy, pal. Remember, they ain't got a thing on you. So long. All right. Good night, dear. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, sorry, inspector. That's yeah, okay. Nothing irregular about the case, of course. Stomach contents analyzed as chloral hydrate. Doctor tells me you'd had trouble with Townley. Said the guy was turning into a regular addict. Well, if there's anything I can do. Ah, I'll... forget it. Eh, she'll probably close it up. Don't think you'll even have to testify. Well, thanks a lot, Mason. Sorry I had to disturb you. Well, that's quite all right, Inspector. Good night, Mason. Hey, better get back to bed and get some sleep. You look like you've had a hard day. <laughs> Yes, try and sleep, Jerry. You're exhausted. 
Your arms and legs ache with fatigue and your brain keeps spinning like a top. It's there every time you close your eyes. Black and white circles, like a whirling rifle target, with a little man in glasses grinning at the center. Sleep, Jerry. Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Well, what's this, Jerry? Could you be dreaming that you're walking in Central Park alone? There's not a breath of air. The leaves of the trees hang limp and motionless. It's too quiet to be real. Oh, Mason. Huh? What? Townley. Mr. Townley, you can't... Oh, yes, I can. Here, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Why, you're... No, no. Oh, yes, yes, we've met before, Mr. Townley. I happened in the drugstore on the night Mr. Mason made arrangements for your uh, departure. Mason, I want you to meet Mr. Death. Mr. Death? Right. Odd name, isn't it? Death, D-E-A-T-H. You see, I've retained Mr. Death to handle my case. He specializes in cases of this kind. You know, double crosses, cold-blooded murders, that sort of thing. He's a man of exceptional ability. I was lucky to get him. What do you mean? Mr. Death is what you might call a, a retributionist. Precisely. A retributionist. Uh, deal in retribution, evening up all scores. Rather uncommon practice. <laughs> yes. Uh, you see, Mr. Mason, we operate on the premise that it's still murder, even if you don't get caught. No. Uh, no, now, it isn't. Now, 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 relax, Mr. Mason. You have nothing to worry about. Everything is taken care of. All the details can be worked out before I leave on my trip. Uh, you've, uh, uh, you've, uh... Uh, seen this issue of travel, Mr. Mason. Remarkable article on Syria. No, you're wrong. I have nothing to We're do with it. We're not angry at you, Mason. For that matter, you did me a favor. I much prefer this to the newspaper business. There's no reason why we can't handle this matter of retribution as a nice, friendly little deal. Of course, of course we will. Now, now, let's talk about your trip. My trip? My one passion is travel, Mr. Mason, and I suspect you have hidden leanings toward it yourself, so I've arranged for you to take a trip, too. No, no. It'll be a much more interesting trip than mine, I assure you. I don't have the itinerary as yet. No, go but... away. Go away! Go away! No, no, go. Go. It's a dream. It was only a dream. Lori. Lori, you have no idea what it was like. They both grinned at me and talked about retribution and a long trip. Well. What? I shouldn't say I told you so, I guess. There was no other way out, Lori. I know. I suppose I'm as guilty as you are. You, you just aren't a murderer, Jerry. You haven't got the right kind of a mind. This was so real. You've got to get hold of yourself. It's done, and there's nothing we can do to change it. Now, now where's the money? Here. I picked it up at the post office this morning. Mm. Small bill. Good. I'll return it to the safe. Mr. Thatcher might get in early. You'll have it all ready for him. And I'll be back later this afternoon. Now, you've got to get some sleep. I know, but every time I close my eyes, I see him. Forget him, will you? I told you, it's only your imagination. All right. I'll go to sleep. Oh, before you go, fix me another bromide, will you? Uh, who is it? Uh, hello there, Mr. Mason. I'm sorry to intrude, but there are still a few things we should discuss. Go away. You're not real. <laughs> you, you're just like all the others. The, the others? Yes, I suppose, I suppose it's just one of the problems every retributionist has to put up with. Nobody believes he's real. Purely a philosophical problem, of course. What? Depends on what you mean by real. 
But uh, that isn't getting us anywhere, is it? Now, let's see. Mm, uh, Mr. Townley uh, left me several instructions here. Oh, by the way, by the way, he sends his apologies. He wasn't able to come this afternoon. What do you mean, instructions? Oh, of course. I, I haven't had a chance to explain how uh, retributionists operate, have I? No. Well, we, uh, uh, we're like architects, Mr. Mason. Architects? Precisely. You see, we get a general picture of the client's needs. Then we present a plan. Plan for what? A blueprint for retribution, of course. You see, I have yours right here. Uh, Mr. Townley has approved of it, by the way. I see. Suppose I don't approve. Oh, that won't affect it one way or the other. (laughs) Uh, You see, Mr. Mason, once a plan is prepared and approved, uh, the subject has nothing to do but wait. I've, uh, I've taken such an interest in your case, I've prepared a rather uh, original plan, <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Oh, nothing is more certain than retribution, Mr. Mason. Now, let's see, let's... Oh, yes, I, uh, I wanted to discuss the time element with you. It's been rather important in your case. We uh, usually work over a period of years, but it happens that I I want to take advantage of uh, an unusual opportunity. (laughs) Your date has been set at April 30th. That's tomorrow? Yes. The blueprint. Let me see it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. That's out of the question. Well, it's not a plan at all. It's a travel magazine. Give it to me. I said you can't touch it, Mr. Mason. Oh, no. All right. Try. Uh, What? (laughs) You see, you can't touch the plan, Mr. Mason. All you can do is uh, wait. Just wait. Jerry? What? Jerry, Jerry, it's me, Larry. Open the door. Jerry, Mr. Thatcher's back. About an hour after I put the money in the safe. I told him you were sick. April 30th, he said. Tomorrow. What? Well, what's the matter? Nothing to do but wait, huh? Tomorrow, he's coming back for that travel magazine, the one I saved for him. Well, you're out of your mind. I'm okay. Listen, go back and tell Thatcher I'm going to work all day tomorrow. Tell him to stay home and... Unpack anything. What are you going to do? I got a date, Laurie. A date with Mr. Death. A date with Mr. Death. But remember, you were dreaming, Jerry. But now the dream's getting all mixed up with reality. That's the way your mind gets all mixed up. You're going on your nerves now. Five days without sleep. Five days on double bromides. Your muscles ache and there's a throbbing pain at the base of your skull. And though you don't sleep the rest of the night, Mr. Death's still there, grinning at you from the center of the black and white rifle target, waiting for tomorrow. He doesn't know you're not going to take it lying down, that there's something you can do besides wait, something he might not expect when he comes in as he promised he would pick up the new travel magazine. You stagger through the next day and... Finally, just as before, the door opens at about closing time. Uh, hello there, Mr. Mason. Oh, it's you. I, I hope you remembered about the travel magazine. Yes, I remembered. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mason. Twenty-five. Yes. Say, where do you live? Up on East 78th Street, near the river. Well, I, I live up that way. I'm about to close up now. I'll take you home. Oh, fine, fine. Uh, why are you stopping here by the river, Mr. Mason? All right, Mr. Death. It's April 30th. Oh, what do you mean? You heard what we were talking about that night, didn't you? Got the whole works. Uh, Lean what? back and wait. Huh? Just sit around and wait for you to spring the works on the cops. Tell them I killed Ted Townley. Did you have that in mind for April 30th, huh? 
Tonight, maybe? I, I, I didn't... Oh, yes, you did, Mr. Death. Retribution, huh? Well, maybe this is something you forgot to put in your blueprint. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's tale. Meantime, a question. If you could have your gasoline tailored to order, just what characteristic would you consider most important? Well, today, under gasoline rationing, the chances are you'd say mileage, which explains why so many drivers have been changing to the West's most longer, most famous longer mileage motor fuel, Signal Go Farther Gasoline. You see, for years, drivers who have kept a careful record of gasoline mileage have found they do go farther with signal gasoline. Now, naturally, with certain gasoline ingredients reserved for war, no gasoline today can give you all the zip and anti-knock quality you found in pre-war signal gasoline, and which you'll be enjoying again in even further improved signal post-war gasoline. But this much you can be sure of just as they've been doing for the past 14 years. Signal Oil Company is still producing the finest gasoline that can be made today. And the famous Signal formula still places the emphasis on mileage. So to make sure you're getting the most miles from every ration coupon, stop at the station wearing the black and yellow Signal Circle and get your best buy today. Signal Go Farther Gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. There's nothing to worry about now, Jerry. Mr. Death is out of your life for good, deep in the river with a hundred-pound chain around his neck, and there are no prying friends or relatives to inquire for him. You can sleep now, and it's wonderful, isn't it? No more leering faces, no more blueprints, just the good, solid black velvet of sleep. Twenty-four hours of it, just like a baby. The old bounce is back the next night, and you can smile again. Jerry, you're sure it was? Don't worry, baby. They'll never find him. Oh, man, I feel like a million bucks. Oh, by the way, I'm going on a trip. Mr. Thatcher told me I needed a vacation. Trip? Where? Well, look what I found in Mr. Death's pocket. Complete grand tour. First cabin all the way. Oh, but you can't use that ticket the name. No, you don't know me, baby. But what about passports? Took care of that, too. Oh, you're taking a chance, Jerry. Oh, no. I wouldn't miss this for the world. After all, Lori, it isn't every day a guy picks up a free ride on a boat like the Lusitania. Yes, you really got yourself a free ride, Jerry. But perhaps that was part of the blueprint, too. The luxury liner Lusitania... And that German torpedo off the coast of Ireland. Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Harold Swanton, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>